Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor in chief over at theserverside.com. You can follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ. And I want to talk to you about how to revert a git commit and really what the difference is between revert and reset because a lot of people get confused between the revert and reset command. But if you stick with me, I think I'll give you a good example of the revert command and really help you understand what it means. Now, in order to demonstrate the revert process properly, I'm going to have to add a few commits to a Git repository. And I, I want to start from scratch here so that there's no confusion. So I'm just going to start off. I'm just in my home directory here, and I'm going to make a directory. Just call it example and cd into there. And then just do a git init command, right? So, I mean, this is just set up here. There's nothing interesting going on. And what I want to do is I want to just kind of add a few files to this repository. Um, I'm going to start off by creating a file called Alice. So I'll do like a echo Alice. So now I've got one file in there. And then I'm going to add this file and I'm also going to commit it. So git add and git commit dash m first git commit one file. So there we go, we've got one file and we've got one commit. And if I do a git ref log, you can kind of see that history. First git commit one file, right? There's one file in there, it's called alpha.html. Okay, so alpha, beta, let's add our beta file. Echo Becky goes into the beta.html file. So now we've got a file, now beta in there. If we do a little git status, it says to us, hey, you haven't checked this in and you haven't even added it to the git index, so I'm going to do that as well. So git add, git commit, this just runs it in one command here. And if I look at my git ref log, you can see I've now got a first commit and a second commit. Okay, can you bear with me on this? Like, I just want to have a, a few files in my git commit history. And so there's my charlie file. And so now I've created a file named charlie.html. And then I've done the git add and git commit. I guess uh, I'm just going to do two more. And so this is just exactly the same as the steps that I did with the first three files. It's just different. So it's exactly the same. It's just different. And what I'm doing is I'm creating, you know, the delta file, the fourth file. And then I'm adding it and committing it, saying fourth git commit. And then... Well, I think we're done now. Well, I mean, we're done after our, we create our fifth one. But there's our Edison file. Okay, so now I've added five files. I've done five commits. I can take a look at my git ref log. You can see I've got first commit, second commit, third commit, fourth commit, fifth commit. And I can even see the hash codes of each of those commit files as well. Now, here's the question. The question is, what do you think would happen if I did a revert on this third commit? So I'll just say I went git revert, and then I have to type in that hash ID. Git revert, and what is it? 4466E04. And you got to imagine if I spelled it properly as well. But think about this, right? So we've got one, two, three, four, five commits. Each commit had one file in it. If I do a revert on this third commit, will I end up with the first two files only? So I revert to the third commit. Does that get rid of the third, fourth, and fifth file? If I revert to the third commit, does it keep the first, second, and third file, and then get rid of the fourth and fifth? Or if I do a revert on this third commit, will it get rid of the third commit only? Now, most people think this is gonna work like a reset. And with a reset, if I said git reset 446E04, it would take me back to the state of that repository at the point of that commit, which would mean one, two, three files. But watch what happens when I revert. When the revert completes, you can see it says, hey, I revert 
reverted to third git three commits. Now if I do a git ls, if I just do an ls command, notice that I've got four files in here. So that revert didn't do a reset, it just reverted this one commit. And that one commit only added one file to it. And so it removed the file from this third commit, but it left everything that was in the fourth and fifth commit and the first and second commit. Now that's not the behavior that a lot of people expect from the git revert command, but that's how it works. It pulls out all of the files, all of the changes that happened in that particular commit that you're reverting, and it leaves everything else alone. As I said, that's a big distinction between the reset command. A lot of times when people talk revert, what they actually mean is reset. Now the other thing too that is a little interesting here is the fact that I've only added one file per commit. Normally you won't do that. Normally you'll have multiple files changed. And so the revert does not work on a single file. The revert works on the entire commit. So if you've got five files changed in a particular commit and you revert it, all five of those files are reverted back to the way they were prior to that commit. It doesn't go one file at a time. So that's another distinction. If you want to do that, you could. if you want just one file, you could probably do a checkout, um, but uh, you won't do it uh, with the git revert command. And there you go. That's how the git revert command works. Now, if you enjoyed this tutorial, well, subscribe. Um, but you can also follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ. And I'm also the editor-in-chief over at theserverside.com. So head over there if you want to learn more about Git, GitHub, and anything that has to do with enterprise software server-side development.